If I asked you, what's the most dangerous animal in the world? What would you name? Sharks, crocodiles, snakes. What if I told you the most dangerous animal is something smaller than a pencil eraser, lighter than a feather, something you might not even notice, even while it's attacking? The mosquito. This creature causes more human suffering worldwide than any other animal. Mosquitoes kill over one million people every year. By spreading diseases like malaria, dengue fever, yellow fever, West Nile virus, chikungunya, and the one all over the news lately, Zika. Now, recently, I went to Colombia, and despite spraying myself with bug spray every day, I still got bit multiple times. Colombia is a hot spot for Zika, and with 80% of those infected showing no symptoms, I could have Zika right now and not even know it. Now, while I probably won't die from this, I am hoping to start a family soon. And the thought that my future child could have a neurological birth defect or a deformity caused by a mosquito is absolutely terrifying. Now, what's fascinating is that even though many of the diseases that I mentioned earlier have been around for centuries, it was only about 120 years ago when scientists discovered that mosquitoes were the culprit spreading those diseases. And since then, there have been three main ways to tackle this problem. One is to kill mosquitoes or prevent them from biting. Two is to develop medicines to treat the diseases that they carry, and three is to develop vaccines. Scientists all over the world are working on these solutions, but none of these solutions are going to solve the problem if we can't get them to the right people in the right places at the right time. And many of those people live in some of the world's most remote areas, which is where I come in. I spend my days working on healthcare logistics. Logistics is basically getting things from point A to point B, which sounds simple, but it can be incredibly complex, especially when it comes to temperature-sensitive vaccines. Now, keep in mind, the first vaccine for a mosquito-borne disease wasn't invented until 1932, specifically for yellow fever. And in the beginning, vaccines were reserved for the elite in the Western world. Humanitarian aid organizations like UNICEF and the World Health Organization weren't established until after World War II in the late 1940s, and it wasn't until the early 1970s when these groups began mass campaigns to get any vaccines to developing countries. And these did not go off flawlessly. In fact, questions arose. As outbreaks started happening in places where vaccinations had already occurred, and fingers were pointed, and they were pointed at logistics. You see, scientists knew that vaccines must be kept within a very specific temperature range in order to maintain their potency, but there were no guidelines for their transport. In fact, the World Health Organization didn't release any guidelines until almost 20 years later, in 1990. That's not even that long ago. And despite those guidelines, even today, the World Health Organization estimates that over 50 percent of vaccine doses worldwide are wasted. They never even make it inside of a human body. And a major leading factor is improper handling during logistics, especially to remote areas. Now, I have an idea for how we can get these vaccines to these remote areas, but before I tell you, let me first describe to you how we get them there today. This is Al Nasser in South Sudan. South Sudan, for reference, is about the size of France or Texas. It has a population of 12 million people, and 80 percent of them live in rural areas just like this. Look at this place. What percentage of infants under the age of two do you think are fully vaccinated there? Seven percent. Now, most vaccines are manufactured in the U.S. and Europe. They're sent by plane in a refrigerated container. In this case, going to the airport of Juba. The tricky thing is that this container must be recharged periodically in order to maintain that set temperature. So the timing of the layovers to get there must be strategically planned. Once it arrives, it must go through customs, which can take hours or weeks. After that, it must travel to a central warehouse by plane or truck. 
However, out of the 85 airstrips in South Sudan, only three of them have paved runways, and there's only one paved road in the whole country. And here it is. It's going in the opposite direction. During the rainy season, which can last seven whole months, travel becomes nearly impossible. As 60 percent of the roads and almost all of the runways turn to a thick mud, like this. On top of that mud pit, only five percent of the entire population has electricity, and the central warehouse is going to be the last place that has power for refrigeration. At this juncture, the vaccine would be shipped in a cooler. Then it would be taken to the local clinics, which are still hours away. It would travel by van or motorcycle or bicycle or donkey, or maybe even requiring transportation on foot through mud or water, like this. Notice the lid on that cooler is slightly open. This vaccine made it this far in the logistics journey, and it all might be wasted due to lack of understanding of proper handling by that carrier. But let's say that that lid was closed and it did make it to the village of Al-Nasser. The next challenge. There are whole populations that don't even know what a vaccine is. In fact, the word "vaccine" might not even exist in their language. Think about trying to explain to someone with little to no understanding of modern Western medicine what a vaccine is and why they should walk a day or two or three to a local clinic to go get it. And that's not all. On top of coordinating that vaccine to arrive, you must also coordinate a very limited medical staff to arrive at the same time to administer it before it spoils. And that's hoping that the central warehouse didn't forget to include syringes in the cooler. So now you see, every single one of those challenges that I just mentioned is an opportunity for failure. And this is just one of tens of thousands of villages around the world, each with their own completely unique logistical challenges. Just think about how you would get something to the floating villages of Cambodia, or the jungles of Haiti, or the islands of Tanzania. That 50 percent wastage rate that I mentioned earlier—that's actually starting to sound pretty good, right? <laughs> well, luckily, there have been a lot of recent creative inventions to help in this process. Like, for example, this cooler, which can keep things cold for up to 35 days without electricity. Or my personal favorite, this solar-powered refrigerator that can be affixed to the back of a camel. That's real. <laughs> Or, of course, drones. All of these are great solutions, but each one still has issues. Take drones, for example. While drones can quickly fly over rough terrain, or they can send rush orders if the central warehouse forgot to include something, most drones only have a limited radius of about 50 miles. Which means this would require a fleet of drones, a network of depots to store them, and a skilled people to control them all. So, what if we could look at this whole process differently? What if we take a step back and remember the problem that got us in this situation? Mosquitoes spread disease. And what if we could use part of that problem as a solution, and use mosquitoes to kill mosquitoes? This is actually being done today. In Brazil, scientists have released mosquitoes that were genetically modified so that their offspring die in the first few days. The result was a 90 percent decrease of that species of mosquito in the area. Now, while this sounds like a great solution, obliterating an entire species that could have a negative impact on the ecosystem. Plus, we need to remember that in fact, the real problem is not mosquitoes; it's that mosquitoes spread disease. To that end, other researchers are looking at ways to alter the DNA or inject them with a certain bacteria that blocks the transmission of these disease-causing parasites to humans, thereby eliminating the spread of disease. This is really interesting, but I have another idea, and my idea has to do with logistics. What if we could use the problem as a solution in a different way? Consider this example of immunotherapy. In some of the latest cancer treatments, doctors are injecting patients with genetically modified versions of viruses such as measles, polio, and HIV that have been engineered to target cancer cells. This triggers the patient's own immune system to recognize and fight that cancer. In many cases, the results have been miraculous, and many patients have gone into remission. 
Now, the beauty of this solution is that not only do they use viruses as a delivery mechanism to target cancer cells, but they use viruses that have inherently been looked at as a major problem, as part of the cure. What if we could do something similar regarding mosquitoes? Remember, mosquitoes target the blood supply of humans really through the same delivery mechanism as how a vaccine shot is delivered. What if we could inject the mosquitoes with the vaccine? And then release these vaccine-carrying mosquitoes into the right areas of the world, so that they can go out and administer it to the local population. Now, last year, millions of vaccines never made it to where they were going. That's millions of people who were left to cross their fingers and hope for the best. But mosquitoes delivering vaccines—this could solve for that. Vaccines can survive inside of living organisms, which gets rid of all the temperature-sensitive complications that I mentioned earlier. Mosquitoes seek out humans, and they don't ask before they bite, <laughs> which overcomes the communication barriers and the lack of education. The mosquito is the administrator and the syringe, which reduces the need for additional physicians and supplies. And most importantly, this delivery mechanism. Allows us to bypass some of those hurdles of final mile delivery, so that we can access the people in the right places who are dying every day. Now, I realize there are some medical and ethical dilemmas regarding using mosquitoes as a delivery mechanism, <laughs> like how can we control dosing, and is it right to force a vaccination on an entire population without their consent? <laughs> Minor details. <laughs> But we need to challenge researchers and lawmakers to further explore what it would take to do this, and we need to challenge ourselves to think differently. As scientists are out there looking for these new cures, we in logistics need to be thinking about ways to get them to the right people, so that we can be ahead of the curve as the next breakthrough is discovered. Now, today I talked about mosquitoes, but there are thousands of other problems out there waiting to be solved. I'm telling you this idea so that we push ourselves to think about all of the problems that we face from a different angle. We don't often think about using the problem as part of the solution, but what if we did? Thank you.